Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. In this episode, we're diving into another classic shortest path algorithm, the Bellman-Ford algorithm. What makes this algorithm special is that it doesn't just work with positive edge weights, it can also handle negative edge weights and even detect negative weight cycles. This makes it more useful than Dijkstra's algorithm in certain situations. Before we dive into the Bellman-Ford algorithm, Let's take a moment to revisit the shortest path problem. This is one of the fundamental challenges in graph theory, and you might remember that Dijkstra's algorithm is one of the most efficient ways to solve it. This method follows a greedy approach with dynamic updates. It always expands the node with the shortest known distance and keeps refining the shortest paths to its neighbors until all nodes have been processed. If you're curious to learn more about Dijkstra's algorithm, be sure to check out our other videos on this topic. However, Dijkstra's algorithm has a major limitation. It cannot correctly handle negative edge weights. But what does that mean? In some real-world scenarios, an edge in a graph might have a negative weight. For example, in finance, a negative weight might represent a discount or profit in a transaction. In network routing, it could indicate a reduced cost for data transmission. The problem is that Dijkstra's algorithm follows a greedy approach. Once it finalizes the shortest path to a node, it assumes that path will never change. As a result, it can fail when dealing with graphs that include negative edge weights. Let's go through an example. Imagine we have a graph where the distance from A to B is 4, A to C is 3, and B to C is minus 2. If we use Dijkstra's algorithm, it will first determine that the shortest path from A to C is 3 and never reconsider it. But if we take the path from A to B to C, the total distance would be 4 plus negative 2, which equals 2, actually shorter. The problem is, Dijkstra's algorithm won't find this because it locks in the first shortest path it discovers and never looks back. So, how do we handle graphs with negative edge weights? That's where the Bellman-Ford algorithm comes in. The Bellman-Ford algorithm, introduced by Richard Bellman and Lester R. Ford Jr. in 1958, finds the shortest paths from a single source node. Its core idea is iterative relaxation, repeatedly relaxing all edges until all shortest paths are determined. Here's how it works. First, we initialize the distances. The starting node is set to zero, while all others are set to infinity. Then, we perform v-1 iterations, where v is the number of nodes, relaxing every edge in each iteration. If a shorter path to a node is found, its distance is updated. This process is known as relaxation. After v-1 iterations, all shortest distances are finalized, unless a negative weight cycle exists. To detect such cycles, we run one additional iteration. If any distance can still be updated, it means the graph contains a negative weight cycle, where paths can decrease indefinitely, preventing convergence. Now, let's walk through a visual example to see the Bellman-Ford algorithm in action. Imagine we have a directed graph with six vertices, A, B, C, D, E, and F. The edges and their weights are shown in the diagram, and some of these edges have negative weights. For example, the edge from C to B has a weight of minus 2, and the edge from D to F has a weight of minus 1. Our goal is to find the shortest path from A to all the other nodes. To begin, we create a table with three columns. The first column lists all the nodes in the graph. The second column shows the current shortest distance from A to each node. Initially, the distance from A to itself is zero, while all other nodes are set to infinity because their shortest paths aren't determined yet. The third column records the predecessor of each node, which will help us later when we need to reconstruct the shortest path. At the start, all predecessors are empty. Next, we list all the edges in the graph to get ready for iteration. Unlike Dijkstra's algorithm, Bellman-Ford doesn't require the edges to be processed in any specific order. The final shortest path results will be the same, no matter what order we check the edges in, though the order may affect how quickly the algorithm converges. Now let's start the iterations, or relaxation process. According to the Bellman-Ford algorithm, we need to perform v-1 iterations. Since our graph has six vertices, we'll perform five iterations. 
In the first iteration, we go through all edges one by one and try to update the shortest paths from A. First, we check the edge from A to B, which has a weight of 6. Since A's current shortest distance is 0, 0 plus 6 equals 6. Since 6 is smaller than B's initial distance, infinity, we update B's shortest distance to 6 and set A as its predecessor. Next, we check the edge from A to C, which has a weight of 4. Since A's distance is 0, 0 plus 4 equals 4, which is smaller than C's initial distance, infinity, so we update C's shortest distance to 4 and set A as its predecessor. Then, we check the edge from A to D, which has a weight of 5. Since A's distance is 0, 0 plus 5 equals 5, which is smaller than D's initial distance, infinity, so we update D's shortest distance to 5 and set A as its predecessor. Next, we check the edge from B to E, which has a weight of minus 1. Since B's shortest distance is 6, 6 plus minus 1 equals 5, which is smaller than E's initial distance, infinity, so we update E's shortest distance to 5 and set B as its predecessor. Then, we check the edge from C to B, which has a weight of minus 2. Since C's shortest distance is 4, 4 plus minus 2 equals 2, which is smaller than B's current distance, 6. So we update B's shortest distance to 2 and set C as its predecessor. Continuing, we check the edge from C to E, which has a weight of 3. Since C's shortest distance is 4, 4 plus 3 equals 7, which is greater than E's current distance, 5, so no update is made. Next we check the edge from D to C, which has a weight of minus 2. Since D's shortest distance is 5, 5 plus minus 2 equals 3, which is smaller than C's current distance, 4, so we update C's shortest distance to 3 and set D as its predecessor. Then we check the edge from D to F, which has a weight of minus 1. Since D's shortest distance is 5, 5 plus minus 1 equals 4, which is smaller than f's initial distance, infinity, so we update f's shortest distance to 4 and set d as its predecessor. Finally, we check the edge from e to f, which has a weight of 3. Since e's shortest distance is 5, 5 plus 3 equals 8, which is greater than f's current distance, 4, so no update is made. At the end of the first iteration, the shortest distances from a to b, c, d, e, and f are now 2, 3, 5, 5, and 4, respectively, with predecessors updated accordingly. In the second iteration of relaxation, we go through all the edges again, checking if any shorter paths can be found. Just like before, we attempt to relax each edge. By the end of this iteration, some shortest distances update further, such as A to B and A to E, which reduce to 1. However, no predecessor updates occur in this iteration. In the third iteration, some shortest distances update further. At this stage, the shortest distance from A to E reduces to 0, and A to F decreases to 3. The predecessor of F changes from D to E. By the fourth iteration, no further updates occur. This means the algorithm has converged early, and the shortest path results are now final. The final shortest distances from A to A, B, C, D, E, and F are 0, 1, 3, 5, 0, and 3, respectively. Using the predecessor nodes, we can reconstruct the shortest paths. For example, the shortest path from A to B is A to D to C to B with a total distance of 1. Now, how does the Bellman-Ford algorithm detect negative weight cycles? Let's go through an example. Imagine a graph with three nodes, A, B, and C. The edge from A to B has a weight of 1, from B to C has a weight of minus 3, and from C to A has a weight of 1. According to the Bellman-Ford algorithm, after V minus 1 iterations, which is 2 in this case, the shortest path distances should have stabilized. But if we run one more iteration and notice that some distances are still decreasing, it means the algorithm hasn't converged. This is a clear sign that the graph contains a negative weight cycle, where distances keep getting smaller indefinitely. Now let's explore the Python implementation of the Bellman-Ford algorithm. 
This function finds the shortest paths from a given start node to all other nodes in the graph and also detects the presence of any negative weight cycles. It takes three inputs, a list of edges, the start node, and a list of all nodes. At the beginning, the function initializes two dictionaries, distances to track the shortest known distance to each node, setting the start node to zero and all others to infinity, and predecessors to store the previous node in the shortest path, initially set to none. Next, the algorithm performs v-1 iterations of relaxation. In each iteration, it examines every edge to determine if a shorter path exists. If a shorter path is found, the algorithm updates the shortest distance and records the predecessor of that node. If no updates occur during an iteration, it indicates that the shortest paths have stabilized and the algorithm can terminate early. After completing these iterations, the algorithm performs a final check. If any distance can still be updated, it indicates the presence of a negative weight cycle, and the function returns a message confirming this. If no negative weight cycle is detected, the function returns the final shortest distances, the predecessor dictionary, and the results from each iteration. Here, we define the nodes and edges based on the graph we discussed earlier. This method backtracks through the predecessor dictionary, allowing us to reconstruct the shortest path from the source node to any destination node. The time complexity of the Bellman-Ford algorithm is fairly straightforward to analyze. The algorithm performs v-1 iterations, where v is the number of nodes, and in each iteration it checks all e edges. Therefore, the overall time complexity is O v multiply e. This means that as the number of nodes and edges increases, the execution time also increases. For sparse graphs, those with fewer edges, this complexity is typically manageable. Now let's compare the Dijkstra and Bellman-Ford algorithms. Both algorithms solve the single source shortest path problem, meaning they aim to find the shortest path from a given source node to all other nodes in a graph. Dijkstra's algorithm uses a greedy strategy, leveraging a priority queue to always expand the node with the shortest known distance. This approach makes it very efficient. On the other hand, Bellman Ford repeatedly relaxes all edges to find the shortest path following a dynamic programming approach. When it comes to time complexity, Dijkstra's algorithm with a binary heap optimization runs in O v plus E log V, which is typically faster than Bellman Ford's O v multiply E, especially in dense graphs with many edges. One major limitation of Dijkstra's algorithm is that it cannot handle negative weight edges, which could lead to incorrect results. In contrast, Bellman Ford handles negative weight edges and can even detect negative weight cycles, making it more versatile. To summarize, if all edge weights are non-negative, Dijkstra's algorithm is usually the faster and preferred choice. However, if negative weight edges are present, or if detecting negative weight cycles is important, Bellman Ford is the better option. That's all for today. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. See you in the next one!